feed them. So when I started measuring for them, the weight started going down, which they had gained. So I said, now, I need, I need more feed. I had planted, I had planted the maize here. We, we, chopped, we chopped the maize and started resupplying the feed. What I have learned is, well, we are telling you 3% of the animal's body weight, but once the animals, you want them to be here, they must feed at the time. They must feed until they are tired if you want them to gain weight. They must feed, you must keep supplying feed all the time. Each animal that wants it should come and eat, should find feed there. Once you want to do a feed load and you start calculating, now where well, we calculate because we want to know the cost, but we don't calculate because we want to calculate for the animals. Because now the feeds are finished, now you are getting other feeds tomorrow. They are not going to gain weight. So the, the feeds should be supplied in Libertad. Now, there is what we call basal feed and what we call are we to yeah. Now, the best of feed, if you have high quality um, maize silage, very high quality maize silage and very high quality uh, hay, the prof was explaining, the moment you allow that crores to overgrow, it reduces the protein content, the energy content will reduce, mm. and then they become strong. The, the, the leaves to stock ratio, the stock ratio is higher than the leaves. So the quality has what? Reduced. But we are talking about the high, if we are talking about the high quality hay. Now, if you have those, you have your molasses, you have your uh, microbes as you're going to see, and you mix, and you allow them to eat at libitum, they will still perform. Are we together? Here the chances are that maize has energy. Do you get my point? The sugars that you're going to put in the molasses will have energy, which will be will have the sugars will be converted to energy. But there's that libitum feeding. There's what Professor I liked what he was explaining yesterday. He said the animal must be satisfied. That is what satisfied. That is what we call stomach feeling. Before we talk about the nutrients available in the feeds. So when you don't feed, that, feed them at libitum, that means that some of them are not what? They are not full. They are not full. Mm -hmm. And if they are not full, you live around the weight because the weight will not what? Will not be there. So the first point is what? Having enough fodder. The enough base of feed available to feed these animals in the libitum. Now, secondly, after we have had, these are my experiences, because I've done, I've done all of them. I've brought young animals, I've brought mature animals, I've brought pure inquiry, and if you bring a pure inquiry, if they are young, those ones are not going to perform even a single day. They're just going to survive. Now, another experience. I'm giving you live, live experience. Another experience that we have, we have found out is that Mixing in uh, the fresh feed, the fresh fodder is very, very, very good. Mixing in like fresh crores, mix uh, cut and carry. Mix. So if you, if actually all the people who are opening up feedlots now, the new ones and the old ones now, I've started advising them to go back to also mixing in the the, the fresh. Now because the the, the most important to why we are making silage is we are trying to conserve. You're getting my point? But as Prof was explaining, he explained that during the process of making silage, the quality is reduced. Are we together? Mm. Now, when that quality is reduced, that means the fresh one will have more, more nutrients. The, the problem to why we cannot tell you to bring out the fresh is because of the dry matter. You, you for sustainability, that is one. And two, you would you would want to bring a full a full. Uh, he was telling you about 130 kilo, uh, 130 kilos of napier, for example. So the dry matter, converting them into the dry matter would be a problem. 
but what we are saying is from my experience you'd have to add some percentage maybe 10 15 percentage of fresh right. in the total mix ratio let me interject a little let me ask these guys to ask you questions and then you answer them specifically okay I, I wanted to finish my presentation then, then they, ask. They, cast, they ask questions because I'm almost done. All right. Finish, okay. Then, ask, okay. then doctor will come in uh, okay. and then we tour. So now, uh, that's another experience from the fresh. Now, when I had brought them, this is another experience. I had my money. Now I was bringing, uh, I was bringing the spent grain. I, I made the TMR and I started mixing constantly. Are we together? Mm. <coughs> they were looking very well, they were gaining very well. I ran out of cash. Cut down the concentrates. Are we together? Yeah. Cut down the what? Then the weight started dropping again and the growth. Are we together? And now I came to a conclusion that if you want to do a field load and you are looking at one, 1.5 kilos a day you cannot do only the best of it there is no way are we together if there are no concentrates and you are looking at 1.5 kilos there is no what the animals are going to survive and they are going to look nice but in terms of gaining weight it is going to be a challenge they are not going to gain weight so there must be nutrients that should compensate the nutrients that are gotten within within the pastures. Especially if it is here, Prof, the other time I was telling you, it can be between seven to eight. But that's a very, very, very high quality. So you define the silage. You define that you have been silage, which is 5%, but the, the, the animal will need around 8% to the protein survive. So you'll have them surviving. But if you want to them to gain, then you must increase the energy and the, 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 pro, the crude protein in order for them to be able to gain weight. So I found out it is a very important thing that you know you must use concentrates as well. And again, in my thinking I was like it is always good to know that I am bringing this number of animals, I've done, uh, my pastures I've planted and I also have the money that is going to buy the concentrates. Because as we say, once these animals are gaining very fast, and then they go back, coming back again is hard. It, is, it disturbs the whole process. So it is always good to have the money, a site that is going to provide the concentrates, and then you have your best of feed. Now, for the new, like now the biggest feed lot in Uganda, uh, the farmer has uh, 1,700 uh, 1, animals in the feed lot. In the, in the structure and it is much 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 huge and different different uh, structure size and the design is different because i've used the metals it is high 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 intensity now but when he came to me i had those experiences so i told him that what we are going to do the winning thing is you must first plant a lot of basal seeds so he went and opened up 200 acres of maize and he opened up another 200 acres of uh, sugar grains. He opened up 50 acres of uh, Florence Guyana. He opened up, I think, around 20 acres of uh, Blackaya Mulato and others. So we found ourselves in around 700 acres of pastures. But initially, he was told to plant 200 acres. And for me, I knew he's going to face the same and there is nothing special like seeing your animal having nothing to eat and you do not have wire to get the fish. So those are two, two different things. Those are different things that you have to consider. Then another thing is if you have the pastures on the farm and you intensively fertilize them. Madame Nakai, she has a very good example. Uh, they have, um, how many acres are they? For crows? Crows? Okay. They have 12 acres of crows. But initially, when we planted that produce, there was uh, a very big challenge. The place is very dry, and the place was infertile. So we put produce there, 